Hey guys, um, this is a quick video just because it's been kind of coming up in certain little ways here and there and I am really bored so I thought oh now would be a really good time to make this video so I'm going to make this video. It is about culture shock, culture differences um, from the little bit that I know between um, Americans and New Zealand, New Zealanders. Oops. I've just got a text and my phone's up here. I'm using my phone and I've got a text so I can't check it. Oops. Anyway, um, now let me start off by saying this is not in any way, shape or form a, sorry, I'm just trying to fix my phone, a um, bashing of New Zealand. I hate New Zealand. None of the usual, I hate it here kind of stuff. This is only my observations from being here and how things are a bit different. Uh, one thing I must say about Americans is that we do tend to assume that everybody in the rest of the world is like us. I, I've i heard it. I never believed it. Moving away and seeing people from America commenting, well, you should do this, you should do this, you should do that. And I'm like, it's not like that over here. This is in America. It's made me realize that it is true and Americans do have this this attitude that the rest of the world is run the way it is run in America. And... Not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but I don't think it's really a good thing either. Um, anyway, uh, one huge thing I've noticed here, and, and let me also preface, preface this by saying I've only ever been in Christchurch. I've never been to the North Island. I don't really know people here because, as you know, I'm one of the most hated people in this entire country. And so I don't have friends. I don't go out. I don't leave the house. I don't interact with people. So... This is based on only my observations from the time I've been here, what I've experienced, what I've gone through. It could be different depending on different cities, being in the North Island. If you're from here, I don't even know. If you're just visiting, it might change depending on the person. Maybe it's just me. Uh, so I'm not saying that this is a, a definitive guide to how it is here, but this is just my own observation. So I don't want anybody knocking me saying, well, up here, it's not like that. I don't know how it is in other places. So this is just what I've seen. So again, starting. What I've seen is they, they're they very kind of old fashioned in the way that they don't really respect women here. Uh, again, from what I've seen, like when I was still with my ex, we would go into places, say we went into a car a car shop or whatever, um, car parts store. And at the time I used to know quite a bit about cars because my stepdad would teach me. Um, he would help me fix shit with my car and blah, blah, blah. And so I knew more at the time than my ex-husband did at the time. So we'd go in and we'd need shit for the car. And I'd go up there and I'd be like, yeah, we're looking for this and this and this and this and that. And, um, cause I'm a strong, independent woman, you know, I'm used to going to places and fucking talking and just being like, yeah, well, I need this and this and that. I'm not like, I'm a woman. I need to learn my place. I need to not speak up because I'm a female. Fuck that shit. If I have something to say, I'm going to say, I don't give a shit if I'm a female, if I'm a wife, if I'm a mother, there's no reason to censor me. So I'm not going to be censored. I've been like that as long as I can remember. And it's usually gotten me into trouble, but especially in this country, and I'd go up and I'd say these things and the person behind the counter would listen to me and look at, you know, who I'm with and be like, oh, so you need it. Hello. I'm the one fucking talking. He's not talking. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm the one talking. I'm the one who knows what we need, you know? And it's like that in quite a few places. It's the man and then the woman. Man works. The man's ahead of the household. The man has to be strong. The woman, just whatever. And that kind of sucks. And that's come into play quite a bit with Logan and his jobs or whatever. There's been times when he's been, he's been kind of like, uh, pushed around at work or taken advantage of, you know, and because we need the money or whatever, and he's a hard worker, he'll be like, Oh, if there's work, I'm going to work. I'm going to work. I'm going to work. And the businesses would take advantage of it. There's been times when he slept at the yard. This is maybe two years ago or so. Um, he slept at his job place because they were working him so much. He only had like two hours in between shifts. So he'd go in at like six in the morning and stop at maybe three in the morning and then start again at six in the morning. And I was like, that's kind of illegal. 
and they shouldn't be doing that and then they're not wanting to pay you for the work you've done fuck that shit and so I've ri I wrote in and I was like you know you shouldn't be treating your workers this way you shouldn't be doing this these people are giving their time they're giving this they're giving that you won't even pay them you know you should be damn lucky you have people like him working for you blah 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 whatever and that didn't go down very well at all and then with this recent time when Logan got he you know he got fired um I panicked you know like I said in my other videos I've been homeless before I've I've not had toilet paper. I've had to steal water from neighbors. I've not had power. I mean, I don't ever want to be there again. And so when he said, oh my God, we're fucked. I've lost my job. We have nothing. We're screwed. I was, I went into panic mode and I texted his boss. I got the number online and I was like, look, you don't know me. I'm Logan's wife. Is there anything he could do to get a second chance? Just please, you know, our family depends on this. We really, really need this. I mean, give him a pay cut. I don't care. Just please give him another shot. And, um, you know, it was just pure panic and desperation. And in the States, that desperation that makes you throw all your pride out the window and reach out to somebody is not usually looked at as a bad thing. If the person has any heart whatsoever, usually they'll be like, wow, you must really be desperate to have gone this far because that's kind of embarrassing. And they, they'll think about it here. It was like, oh man, Logan looks like a bitch because his wife wrote in for him even if he didn't know about it. And that's probably stopped him from having another shot there because he's he's written himself now three weeks later and asked and the guy lied straight to him and said, no, there's no work even though we know for a fact there is because his friend works there and he's told us how swamped they are. They've got like four projects that need doing. Everybody's sick with the flu. They need help and they have no help. And Logan was a damn good worker. The guy apparently had no problem with him as a person. So the only thing I can think of is that he won't take him back because I reached out to him and I tried to save Logan's job. I was, I knew Logan wouldn't do it because he feels as most guys do here that belittling yourself, begging or showing weakness is a sign of being a pussy or being weak. You don't tell anybody you're struggling. You don't tell anybody that you're going through a hardship. You just put on a, a solid face and pretend everything's all hunky dory. And in reality, it's not like that. And I have no problems throwing my pride out the window because I've learned through my life that if you, if you don't know how to reach out, you don't know how to admit that you need help, you will never get help. You have to admit that you need the help in order to receive the help. And he has not learned that yet. And he'll lie. Like his mom will call. Are you okay? Are you okay? No, we're fine. We're fine. And I'm sitting there. Liar. <laughs> we're not fine. Everything's going to shit. What are you talking about? And he won't tell her, you know, and, and that makes me look bad because if she happens to like read my posts online and I'm like panicking, oh my God, we're about to get kicked out or whatever. She'll think that I'm full of shit when in reality it's him because we come from two different places, you know, here they don't like to show weakness. It's all about fronting, you know, you front up. Also, they're, they do front quite a bit. Like you'll walk and then they'll scream shit at you as they drop by, but they will never do it to your face. That's why you get so much bullying and shit online here because everybody gets bored and they bully each other because they've got nothing else to do. They think nothing of talking shit about each other. It's the gossip that keeps the community flowing. They like to gossip. And, um, oh, another thing here, which could be awesome, but it's not used in a way that it should be used, is the fact that there are a lot, lot of alternative people here. You will see, I guess because of the Ma Maori, 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 Mary, um groups here uh they have the tattoos they're they're real big on their family and their whatever uh, <laughs> i don't know um they're real big on their culture and so they have cultural tattoos which includes men and women getting tattooed on their face and they get this like design here on their chin and stuff so there's that there's people with dreads long dreads long hair colored hair you will find colored hair everywhere you will find grandmas walking around bright pink hair bright purple hair shit like that you will see just fully tattooed people i mean the tattoo culture here is huge and then all the kids they have piercings people here just pierce themselves pierce each other there's this place called the needle exchange and it's to promote i guess healthy drug use they're not promoting drug use but 
it's to help stop disease. So if you are a druggie, you go in and you get your needles, you bring in your old needles to get them off the streets, you exchange it and you get like new needles and they sell the needles for like $2 and 50 cents. And so those are the same kind of piercing needles that you use. So you go in there and you pierce yourself. That's why, you know, I've done this myself. I, I did this myself a couple of times, the front of my tongue a few times, the second one of this, I've done this myself. I've done this a couple of times myself. You know, I've done most of my piercings myself. I've pierced Logan, haven't pierced Dorian. Um, it's just something you do here. So you'll find teenagers, young teenagers, and they're all pierced up, you know, they're all tatted up. I mean, it looks really cool, but at the same time, I still get bad reactions from people, which doesn't make sense to me because I know that they're heavily alternative here, but they're not goth alternative. And so there's still a huge like prejudice against gothic people. They're still, eh, why are you gonna dress like that? Eh, oh my God, he looks so weird. But, but you can find weird people, which is really strange. Um, they also like really bland food. Like I've mentioned in other videos, they don't like things with a lot of flavor. Um, pineapple, pineapple pizzas, barbecue, lots of chicken, like chicken salt, chicken, chicken flavored potato chips, things like that are really big here. Um, fish and chips is probably like the biggest, cheapest takeaway fast food thing that they have here. Um, I don't really know. Like I said, I don't really go out. There's nothing to do here. Drinking is like the national pastime. It's what everybody does. Everybody gets drunk and that's like all they do. Just drink, 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 drink. Um, don't get a lot of movies here. Uh, not hardly anything comes to cinema and when it is here, it doesn't stay very long. Uh, the movie going experience is pretty shit here. You'll be lucky if something you want to see actually comes to the theaters here. Um, not a lot of American fast food places. I think in this city, we've got McDonald's, Domino's, Pizza Hut, Wendy's, which is totally destroyed the Wendy's name. Uh, Carl's Jr.'s new Burger King. And there's a Denny's, but the menu is completely different. You will not find the spicy chicken or anything. No spicy chicken. Oh, and then there's KFC here as well. You won't find spicy chicken on the menu. You won't find anything like that. Um, it's just, it is just so, so different. So different. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Um, I guess the really big thing that I've noticed, which is the point of this video, was just to say, like, the way they view women's place in the world is very, like, 50s, you know? The wife stands behind her husband. The husband does everything. The wife's supposed to just kind of whatever. Women are not taken seriously. And it's kind of shit. It kind of really sucks. Sorry if this video has been quite boring and uninformative. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you soon. I've got a couple of ideas, but I can't because I've got to head out. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was quite boring, but I will see you guys as soon as I can. And take care. Bye.